um, on these same three wines. And so I can see that my cab um, has some lactic in it, which is a good thing because it, we're turning the malic into lactic. And my malic sample is, is here and I have just a little bit of, of malic still left in that cab and that was on November 9th. I can see that I've got quite a bit of malic acid still in the Merlot and the Barbera, but I do have some lactic acid in it as well. So there is, you know, the conversion is happening. So it'll be interesting to see how the uh, test run uh, this time, which is about three weeks after that, that initial test was done, to see if the cab's completed and where we're at on the Merlot and Barbera. Now that our samplers are dry, what we need to do is roll the paper into a cylinder, not overlapping the edges. So we basically want to line, line it up as close as we possibly can, which can be difficult. And we want to staple in such a way that it will tie, the, tie this together. So we want to catch half the paper on one side and half the paper on the other, like so. We want to do that on both top and bottom. And uh, what that's going to do is it's going to create a a nice cylinder so that we can uh, set it in our one gallon container voila so anyways we're going to take our one gallon container now take the lid off we're going to take our solvent developer solution which uh, does have a pretty strong smell so you're going to want to do this in a fairly ventilated area and we're going to want to pour enough of this in here to put about a half half an inch of solvent in the bottom of this and again this solvents reusable so whatever doesn't soak into your paper can be poured back in to the container and reused. The solvent shelf life seems to be fairly long. Um, and what I've been told is that uh, you can always tell when the solvent is, um, is basically going bad because when your paper develops, instead of having this blue-green background, it will be just basically an orange background. That means that your solvent's shelf life is expired and it's time to get some new solvent, obviously. Um, so anyways, we've poured about a half an inch of solvent into the bottom of this container. We wanna make sure, you know, it's not all sloshing around. And we're just gonna take this and we're gonna very gently set it down in there, making sure that it, you know, our samples are on the lower side of this. And the idea is that the solvent's going to come, you know, paper's going to set about here. And what's going to happen is that solvent's going to wick up into the paper. And as it's wicking up the paper, it's actually grabbing these acids and drawing them up to different levels in the paper. And so we're going to very gently set this down into the center of our gallon container we're going to put the lid on because we want to contain all the vapors inside of this because that's part of how this works and we're going to let this set for three to five hours approximately. You can let it set overnight, it's not gonna matter. Uh, it's not like it's you know on any time thing, but it will take between three and five hours for that solvent to wick all the way up to the top of the paper. And what I've noticed is that it, 
it never gets all the way to the very top. It will typically be about a quarter of an inch. It will stop short of a quarter of an inch. And I've ran this, I've left it sit in the solvent from three hours to eight hours overnight and it basically ends up at the same location. So don't think that it's got to get all the way in, to the very top because it doesn't. So as long as it's basically within about a quarter of an inch and that's going to take three to five hours to do, um, everything should be fine. So now we're going to just let this sit for three to five hours and, and uh, at that time we will remove it and let it hang to dry. Well, it's been, uh, it's been about five hours and we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, chromatography paper from the uh, developer solution and we're going to use this little plastic clip because I don't like to touch the paper um, with the solution wet like that. Um, oil from your hands and stuff like that can distort some things on it. So I have these little clips and I'm just going to grab it, pull it up. And as you can see, the uh, solution has wicked up through the entire paper and um, we're just going to suspend this on a wire overnight, let it start to dry. And that's, uh, that's what it looks like once it's been soaking in that solution. So I've suspended the uh, chromatography paper. Um, by a wire um, and a clip, a little plastic clip, um, out in my garage because the smell of that uh, solution, you know, you don't want that in the house. It it's, doesn't smell all that great. And so, anyways, I just wanted to show something. I actually have a bottle of ammonia out here also that I've opened and I just set it on the ground. And it's, you know, it's probably, oh, two feet below the chromatography paper and Bob Peak with um, Winemaker Magazine who taught uh, the labs at the uh, Winemaker Magazine conference basically said it's actually the ammonia that's in the air naturally there's ammonia in the air naturally I guess that helps the developing of the chromatography so if there you're having problems with your development um, happening properly. He says open up a bottle of ammonia in the room, anywhere in the room, that you're letting it dry and it should cause that paper to develop uh, quicker and more clearly. So I've just made it a habit, you know, doesn't say it in the instructions anywhere, but I've just made it a habit of opening up this thing of ammonia uh, somewhere near the chromatography paper um, while it's drying. So we uh, have waited 24 hours for the uh, chromatography paper to develop and this is what it looks like once it's done. And so we can see that our cab, here's our uh, our malic acid right at this level and this is our cab we can see that there's no malic acid left in the cab we can see that there's still a slight amount of malic acid left in the uh, in the Merlot and the Barbera is completed malolactic fermentation also so that's what it looks like once it's dried pretty easy process anybody can do it just gotta buy the the kit and uh, that way you know when your uh, MLF is done thank you